as the title says. Let's have a look-see after what is considered a growing season, how the Schwerter Hall is doing that I was super disappointed in and have been fighting many, many of their orchids. Thank you for joining me for this little update. I have the link to the original video in the description below. As well, I'm gonna put up a card if you want to watch that video and then see how these orchids have fared. So there's a mixed bag here. I'm going to go and do this in the order as I showed and talked about them in the original video. And that is with starting with the Epidendrum Stamfordianum. So we have still the growth that it came with, with these extremely damaged leaves, pitted, and I don't know what that all was. At least there weren't any bugs on it when it arrived. But this is the original, that's a better angle. This is the original damage. And since then, I have grown one, my first new growth from it came out a little bit dodgy as well. But the sunburn, that is me. So I'm not holding anybody responsible for damages done by myself, but I was very, very disappointed. And it just added up to the whole haul that I had and every single plant had a problem. And to some degree, some still have a problem. But now we do have some really good growths from this year. These are the two, and I'm hoping that it will spike soon. Start with its spikes. Gorgeous, gorgeous orchid. I am glad I can, I'm growing out the nasty, so eventually I'll be able to trim those parts off. In the moment, I'm keeping them as storage organs because this orchid really, really needed it. All right, so we are inside now. I'm not going to take out my Rene Marquez crossed with Brassavola dickiana. It is in bud. Quite a big spike. I might get three blooms out of this. They take a while to bloom. But as an update, it has come and grown out of its distorted blooms that I got at the beginning of this year, before I was even filming. And I've mentioned that in my video of my disappointed Schwerter Hall. So we've had some really good blooms from it since then, from the previous spike. And this year's growth has also gotten a little bit bigger. Not by much, but you know, it looks super healthy and is in spike. So whatever issues this one had, gone. And we're back outside for the Leptotis by color that also bloomed really well for me at the beginning of the season on these two growths. It was a pathetic little orchid when I got it. Got these little canes here. It just looked, yeah, I, I just couldn't believe it. So initially I had it mounted. I took it off the mount, potted it up because it was really, really weak. And then when I saw how great these two new growths had grown, and bloomed. I had taken it out of the pot because I wanted to mount it again simply because of its growth habit. But uh, I saw how incredible the root system had developed in the pot. I immediately changed my mind and said it's going back in a pot. So that's all ceramus in here now. There's a bit of algae on the ceramus. I'm not bothered by that. But uh, this year it only grew one new growth. So I don't know what that is all about and it might, it might not bloom. It is pot bound though, which is a positive thing. I was quite concerned about how weak this orchid was, quite concerned that I was letting it bloom, but I wanted to see the blooms. One new growth, oh well, it looks much better now than it did 12 months ago, that's for sure. I wanted to make this a continuous video, but it appears that clips are gonna work better this way, so I'll just remove orchids and then continue with the order. So here's the um, Cattleya lobata cerula. Super, super sorry little orchid that came to me with these little growths in the back here. That's what I had to work with. And then it grew this growth for me last year, 2019. Very slow grower. And only now is it starting to show how fast it can grow, but this growth has been on the move since end of summer, September. But we're getting at least a massive size jump in the pseudobulbs. 
So this one is also in my preferred setup of LECA only and self-watering. And I have put it in there straight away. I didn't mess around with acclimating or anything like that. I just put it in and, you know, when you pay a lot of money for an orchid and you get three puny little pseudobulbs, yeah, you can just hedge your bets regardless of what you do. It might not make it, but we're on our way. We really are. I'm super pleased. This one is a very, very good progress and success of my Schwerter Hall. Not so good, and I just fiddled around with it earlier in order to show you. Let's zoom in. Let's see if I can get you in there. This is the Francis Fox, Richara Francis Fox, that I got from them. And you can see the state of the orchid. I got her with this back part here. That yellowing leaf is, of course, now due to the energy consumption after two years in my possession. And uh, yeah, the state of the orchid, it was just terrible. Absolutely terrible, disgusting, and how dare they would even send something like this. I have no idea. Having said that, I've been struggling with this orchid since. I'm still struggling with it. And I was fiddling with it because I wanted to show you the roots, how they are when they grow out. Now, normally this is all a little bit more covered more protected but I did want to show you that this is the problem and the orchid is not stable in her pot since two years. She will bloom if I don't do anything to blast this bud and I did bring her out despite this progress here because if she doesn't bloom I really don't mind either way but because she is such a in such a bad state I shouldn't let her bloom but again I'm in my case now I'm just done if she doesn't make it that's fine. I don't have the exact replacement for her, but I have another Richara Francis Fox, a much more healthier orchid. And she is in the same setup, completely root bound, hasn't bloomed for me yet, but is growing really, really well and no issues with the roots. So I'm wondering if I've got other underlying circumstances going on here and I'm going to wipe my hands off now with some fungicide before I go and touch the others. But that is the progress, lack thereof, of my Richara Francis Fox from Schwerter. Next up, let's zoom out. Whoops. Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi. Very, very happy. In spike. Look at that. Superb. This one was a very weak orchid as well. Came in bloom and i let it bloom because i thought i was going to lose the orchid and then at least i would have enjoyed some of the blooms but we have managed to get her through with umptious umptious flushing to get those roots to grow down into the pot and it's doing really well now now they always lose their leaves in my climate straight away i don't know if that is normal i just accept it for what it is but the next growth that grew then in my care was this one. It did not bloom. Never mind though, we are now in business. I have two spikes that actually developed despite me only counting one in my 132 spikes on the go video. We've got it. She's made it. Very, very pleased. Happy to see this progress. And now she lives outside for the winter time. And I'm hoping, I'm thinking that is what induced the spikes because last year I babied her and left her inside. Nothing radical, no radical temperature changes, nothing like that. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping that's not a bud blast up there. But at least I can see we will get at least three on each spike. Happy Zagonusia is a go in my collection. She's made it and back inside again. <laughs> I'm trying to keep this in order, so. <laughs> but this is my Brasovola Cordata, Sing Ying. And that's the reason it's not outside. I have four buds this year. Ochre looking little spike at the beginning of the season, but it grew really nice growth this year. You can see that little funky thing that it tried to do when it first came to my collection. And then it grew this one and had a very weak bloom, but it was there. And now we've got a growth that actually looks the part, and I'm really pleased about that, with four buds. So I think if 
I can keep this going. I think we've managed to grow this one on for it to be a success. Thank goodness. And we're back outside again. <laughs> Brass of all the little stars. If you ever saw a sorrier sight, let me know. Then I'm really sorry for you that you have one that looks worse than this. I have my doubts with Schwerter and uh, that this being a little stars, because if it is a little stars, I'm telling you, this is this, the worst ever. And um, she's been struggling from Jump Street when she came into my collection. We have tried to get some new growths going. We have some very, very sad roots. Let me get you in. These are all new roots and they look awful. Despite the fact that I have them covered sometimes with uh, sphagnum moss, depending just to baby them and avoid the top dry layer. Very sad, very sorry. And like I said, from the size, if this is a little stars, then yeah, it's even worse than I thought. No progress, nothing positive to report on this one at all. And it's always a scale problem. It is actually segregated. So I'm gonna put it back straight away to keep it away from the rest of my collection. Then we have the Gaia Cattleya Chantilly Lace. Oh, I think she's making it as well. Very, very pathetic orchid that I got from Schwerter. I had this little suitable back here. There's one in here that is now, you know, desiccated and dried off, which is fine. And then I had one back here that is also desiccated and fell off. And finally I got managed to grow. No, this one came as well. So I had the back one, I always get confused with this one because this one has aborted so many growths in its attempt to stick around with me. It's just crazy. But so it came with this and then the two little bulbs in the back plus the desiccated one that I just showed you. Very small, ridiculous for the price I paid for it. And then it had on and off growths. Growths would start and then they would abort, start, abort. So in the two years I've had it, there should be like three more growths on this orchid, but those three have aborted. And then I was given the heads up from Susanna Yu when she saw my original video and she said it needs more calcium. And that's what is being pumped into this orchid and putting in much more calcium than necessary on my other orchids. And I'm getting finally ahead of the game with this one. It was very weak. It loved, the pests loved it. So consistent wiping, but we have managed to get around it. And now this growth is coming in a little bit to the same size, maybe a little bit smaller. It is a winter growth, new roots. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this means with more storage capacity in the plant itself, that it will now, starting next year, grow to some kind of a substantial, normal Chantilly lace. Here is my Kachara Gyrat Kiss. Lives together with a Brassavola little stars because reasons you can see. It is also a scale issue on this one and mealybugs. So there's always a continuous vigilant guard with regards to the pests that attack this orchid. There's not been any progress to my understanding of this orchid. It's not in the pot at all pot bound. And mind you, again, all these were ordered at the same time and arrived at the same time, September 2018. So everything was still warm enough for my climate for it to adapt. The orchid pretty much looks like when I got her with the black tips. And I'm seeing new growth attempting down here. But this is as far as they get. And they get black tips. And this one is the cleanest one so far, right here. And there's one tucked inside there. You see how vigorous this orchid should be with all these new growths, but I'm not getting any size of them. I'm seeing some, a little bit of root nubbin down there. So we'll see if that's going to make it or not. 
But yeah, I have not much to say about this one except part of the dud haul that I have and it hasn't done much in two years of ownership. Very, very separated together with the little stars and I'm monitoring it almost on a daily basis simply because of the fact that it likes to house all the pests that you can imagine. So extremely vigilant with this one. Right. My next one is the Phalaenopsis Yin's Black Eagle that I got from them. Very disappointed for the price of the orchid. I got two leaves and one and a half roots or something like that. It's a slow grower in my collection. Don't know if that is normal. The first root has desiccated and you can see I have not repotted it since I got it. Otherwise that root wouldn't be there anymore. But sometimes I always say sometimes that if an orchid is weak, leave it alone. If it's gonna die, it will die. And regardless if you touch it or if you leave it in the setup and just baby it and hope for the best and get it right. I left it alone, it's still in the pot. Sometimes roots will desiccate, but they're active on the bottom. I won't know until I unpot it, but there was no way I was gonna mess with this orchid, despite the fact it was not looking happy at all. However, this year it bloomed for me, which was really nice. My first year it just grew a little leaf, nothing really to shout or write home about. And then this year it's grown this leaf right here, but it did bring out a spike and I had some gorgeous blooms. I am hoping that this orchid is somewhat happy in the setup because I really want to address this pot come spring next year. Whether it's gonna bloom or not, I don't care. I really want to address what is going on in this pot and make it happy because you can see there's a root there. It's not happy. It's been there for a long time despite some humidity around the top with a little bit of sphagnum moss. No, it's not happy. So very expensive orchid. And I feel that I got a little bit ripped off by just getting two leaves and one and a half roots. However, it's made progress. So I'm, it's not like I'm complaining about these orchids. When they come into your life, you know, it's a luxury to be able to buy orchids. It is what, I, what you get. It is what you expect and then what you get, especially based on what you're paying. And this was a massive haul, a massive haul, because after I had gotten all my wish list orchids at the beginning and I had sourced them from several nurseries, I then went to Schwerta to finish off my collection, literally left Schwerta for last in order to get quality orchids to then bump up my collection with, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then when the box comes, it was, it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. And the subsequent lack of customer service just topped the whole thing off. I have two more to show you, however. Let's see if we can get up. One is the Dendrobium anospum. Let's make sure that the angle of the sun doesn't blur them out. The one you see on the left is the Dendrobium anospum. Yes, I know. Ha ha, me too. But I was in tears when I saw it come out of the box. I had also ordered media from Schwerter, and at the time, they put the media together in with my orchids that were very weak and very sad looking. And they had crushed a lot of leaves. Foul leaves had crushed, spikes had broken. And on top of that, they had some media on top of my anosmum as well. So this thing has been struggling for a long time. This is the cane I got it with, plus these two that are here. And um, yeah, I put it on a Michael mount at this point in time because I want to grow, get away from organic mounts as soon and as best as possible. So this year I thought, look, you're gonna be a goner, then be a goner. But when this cane started growing, I put it on a Michael mount. And it's doing quite well considering, quite well in inverted commas, of course, but you know, considering, let me show you the back. The roots from that cane have grown in the back and through, which is great. We have a long way to go. This orchid actually did try to bloom. Can you believe it? And I nipped that in the bud and that's where the saying comes from. I'm sure that is where the saying comes from. <laughs> 
you're nipping that in the bud because you're nipping buds off in order to um, to make sure that the orchid survives to some degree at least you know that's the best you can do and then you just fingers crossed from there on in so I've never seen the blooms on that one and I doubt it's going to try and bloom but even if it does try I will nip those buds off as well I'm not having it I need another growth and I need it to be something that I can actually grow on and make it a strong orchid and here's my little Phalaenopsis wilsonii just to wrap this up this is a cool to cold grower. What is it doing in Spain? Yeah, it bloomed. Although I had some distorted blooms, it did bloom for me. So it was a very, very sad little orchid. I have to say, now these roots look dry. That is because they are. It's already been watered twice today. But uh, let me make sure that it focuses. There we go. But you can see that there's two roots up here drying off. It is a deciduous Phalaenopsis, so I've only ever had two leaves on it over the winter. Four leaves maximum when it was growing in the summer, but the back leaves have now dropped off. It's just a question of wait and see what it does next. Just recently, well this year, this growing season mounted on this Michael Mount. And that is my update on my Schwerter Hall of 2018. How have they fared in 2020? After doing the original video of how annoyed I was, and I was trying to be diplomatic about how I expressed myself in that video. But I have a very bad taste in my mouth since then from Schwerter. And to be honest, and I have to say this, when I see other people unboxing videos, even to this day, their plants look great, absolutely great. I don't know, again, I'll repeat myself, I don't know who was on duty the day they packed my box. And I can give you an idea that I bought approximately 65 orchids in that one order. I was serious about completing my collection, about bumping it up. I don't then say, well, then this, then that. But when 40 come that are in serious, serious state of rescue or damaged by lethargic lack and lackadaisical packing, my head goes tilt and that's putting it mildly. But I'm so happy to see that other people get their orchids in great condition and I don't know who was on duty when my order was packed. But for that size order, I was expecting a lot more prudence, to say the least. <laughs> Quick update, I hope quick. I can't see the timer from all the clips now. I don't know the total. I hope quick and I hope that you enjoyed to see them again, despite good, bad. But I think we are actually changing the dynamics. The ratio is now more moving towards good and surviving and blooming soon. So we've got three bloomers coming up now, very soon. In orchid terminology, very soon. <laughs> Thank you ever so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. As always, let me know what you've experienced with Schwerter. Good, bad, ugly, or superb. You know, maybe I'm just jinxed. Who knows? Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care and stay safe. Bye.